There's no problems, only opportunities goes the same. And one of those is e-residency offered by Estonia. So you can start and continue a business in the EU. So recently I had the opportunity of doing a video interview with Ott Vatter, the Managing Director of e-residency. Let's listen to what he had to say in part one of the interview. Nice to meet you, Hutt, and um, tell me what you do and what's e-residency? Nice to meet you too. Uh, my name is Oit and I'm the Managing Director of the Estonian e-residency program. The e-residency is a government initiative and it's a digital identity program, which means that it gives you access to Estonian digital services mainly uh, company creation and uh, setting up your own business from anywhere in the world. Very exciting. So tell me what's the benefits for UK businesses of e-residency? The main benefit is uh, location independent business, which means that you can create your company from anywhere in the world. It doesn't really matter where you're located. And the same goes for UK businesses uh, as the Brexit date is is looming and, and uh, there is a lot of uncertainty what's going to happen. There might be a lot of companies who actually transact with other EU companies and they can retain their presence in EU. So how many UK companies so far have taken it up and how many globally? Uh, globally, uh, around 12,000 companies have registered through e-residency and the uh, UK number is around 500. Uh, and total 3,300 e-residents from UK. So e-residency is a personal identification. You don't have to create a company if you don't want to. Excellent, UK. So what type of and size of UK businesses are opting for e-residency? It's mostly uh, very, very small one-man companies, freelancers uh, or, or uh, let's say small uh, companies up to medium size companies and uh, the main field of activity is still um, service-based so it is either software development um, IT there are also some photographers academics uh, copywriters journalists so whoever might work for different customers in uh, different jurisdictions and, and target markets so it's not that people work for the same company for 50 years but they outsource their work um, to several countries Mm -hmm. And those obviously are sounding like uh, solopreneurs or, you know, freelancers, as you say, small businesses. What's the advantage of the medium size and, and corporate business to have e-residency? Generally, when you're, um, when you're a corporation, then you already have existing um, relation with other countries. That means that you might have, you know, a subsidiary located in another country physically then you might not need a digital identity. But when you don't have, um, let's say, a partner company or you're not using a consultation company to actually help you with all the administration, e-residency is meant for the everyday man, the freelancers who actually uh, do not have access to this high cost uh, consultation. Right. And that's, yeah. that's the... Yeah. Excellent. Now, I um, one of the things that's happening here in the UK because of the... Uh, beyond Brexit uh, is the encouragement of UK businesses to start exporting and trading around the world, you know. Um, there's a big resistance by the smaller businesses because uh, they don't understand export, they get complicated about it there. Do you think e-residency can make it easier for them, for the young, smaller businesses to get started in dealing with Europe? I think we can look at this um as an opportunity as well that you you know the smaller companies are also forced into a situation where they have to think more about exporting uh, their services and uh, and e-residency can definitely help it, it might not be for everyone so uh, when your business is based in uk your customers are only in uk of course you shouldn't make your life complicated with having another company in another jurisdiction but if your company has customers all over the EU and you have some kind of presence, you're transacting with them, you need currency exchange from pound to euro, then e-residency definitely might be the push that you need as a freelancer. Okay. Do you think e-residency can help uh, businesses find new customers? Especially Absolutely. Those, yeah. In, in what way? Absolutely. How? So, 
the the community of e-residents is currently um, nearing to seventy thousand people. Wow! And it's a very active community. So when when uh, you you look at um, our community platform, for example, uh, we have uh, different kind of Facebook groups based on nationalities. So, you know, you're an e-resident from Turkey, let's say, and uh, and another one writes there, hey, I'm an e-resident from this region of Turkey. And then you have, you know, six other e-residents under that who are saying that I'm an e-resident from that region. And they share information with each other. So if someone has already started a business, you know, some kind of field of activity in some jurisdiction, then they share the information and they do business with each other as well. And we have a tool called the company profile, which lets you actually showcase your own business. Excellent. The residents kind of show their businesses there to find new partners. Okay. Do you have to be, I've had reg registered for e-residency to be able to join the community? Uh, at the moment, uh, you can join the Facebook group without being a registered e-resident, but um, it is much more powerful when you're actually an e-resident because there's a, a chamber or association that e-residents have created as well called ERICA, International E-Residents uh, <laughs> Chamber Association, All right, and that is a very powerful community. Erica, yes, okay. But it might be for the sceptical ones, and there's a lot of UK businesses who are sceptical. It might be just the wave of lurking to find out more about um, e-residency before they jump, if they, yeah? We have. Uh, we have a lot of information available uh, everywhere. On our website, eresident.gov.ee, or if you just Google e-residency, if, if you go to the Facebook groups, for example, and you ask, uh, you find a new resident and you ask what it is really about and, and they will share their experience happily and help help to convert people to your resident companies. Okay, we'll, we'll post those uh, links up later for you as well. Uh, so tell me, what's the typical time scale from, say, signing up to being able to trade? This depends a little bit where you want to receive the card. So in case of uh, UK, uh, we use our Estonian embassy network to issue the cards. So there's an online application platform, so everything can be done online, but you have to have one face-to-face -face meeting with a representative of the Estonian government. And that's the reason uh, why this document is, is the highest security form of a national document inside the European Union. So we require one face-to-face -face meeting with, uh, with the resident or the applicant and uh, the representative of our foreign ministry. But we have an embassy in London, so once you submit the application, um, it should be there in one to two months. And once you receive the card, uh, you can create a company instantly, and uh, and basically you can start uh, transacting. Okay, so walk me through the total costs of uh, from deciding today to do it to actually forming a company and getting set up and trading. The e-resident uh, application itself costs 120 euros. Uh, that is the cost of the card and the status of an e-resident. Uh, let me be clear that there is no obligation once you are an e-resident. Uh, it doesn't mean that you know you 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 have to move away from your country or yeah. or anything like that. It, it is it is a virtual uh, tool or a virtual key to Estonian digital services. And we see that most of the, the e-residents uh, apply for it because they want to create a company using that digital identity. And, uh, and creating a company using the identity can also be done online. The state fee for that is 190 euros. Uh, we recommend using service providers. Mm -hmm. So uh, companies in Estonia who actually help you with all the administration uh, bookkeeping, um, registration of a virtual address, and if you get some kind of information, they will share it with you. Uh, and their sub subscription fees are around 50 to, to 100, uh, 200 euros a month, really depending the, on the size of your company and the transactions. So the costs are fairly fairly reasonable mm -hmm. uh, if compared to, uh, to other EU uh, member states. Okay, so what are the tax and VAT implications then? Uh, you still pay tax where you create the value. So once you're you're a UK tax resident, that doesn't change in any way once you apply for e-residency. Now, when you create a company using e-resident digital ID, then that company automatically, as an Estonian company, is a tax resident in Estonia. 
But that being said, if your permanent establishment and uh, value is created elsewhere, then the taxes are owed elsewhere. So it really depends, you know, where do you transact them? Where do you create the value? These are general OECD rules, and, and this is nothing new that we are creating in, in, in any way. We are just giving it a virtual uh, measurement. And VAT is still uh, uh, the same in, uh, in EU 20%. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Um, can I ask then, what's the Estonia X road? <laughs> the X road there's a there's a hint in the uh, the name it's it's a road uh, that has a cross section so to say right. uh, imagine imagine uh, a long highway and uh, this highway is connected by smaller roads and uh, the digital identity is the key to get on the highway so you as a private person can um, request information from the highway and the little roads and the little roads lead to different kinds of databases and uh, sources of information for example when i go to the pharmacy and my uh, uh, medical doctor has prescribed me uh, some kind of medication i have it the information is in the health registry for me so i use my id id card i go to the pharmacy i give the pharmacist my id card they plug it into the computer and make a request on my behalf using the main road and the smaller road leading to the uh, the health registry and they know exactly what uh, pharmaceutical to prescribe me so mm. in short this is the x road it's it's a long road connected with smaller roads to different databases and the digital identity is the key to access this road and the information right i think i probably need to use your whiteboard behind you to draw that out <laughs> <laughs> welcome you're welcome sir. okay um so do I need a new name if I'm going? My my company is called BizVision. So let's say I want to set up there. Do I need a new name to trade? If uh, that name has not been used in Estonian business registry, then you do not need a new name. And we have an actual online tool to test it. So you can put in your name and see if it's available immediately. Excellent. OK, so this sounds all really good. Um, but I'm a typical northern north of England business guy and uh, What's the catch? <laughs> the catch is that it's so simple. <laughs> um, we in Estonia, we're a very small country. We're 1.3 million people and, uh, and we're not located in, in the best uh, climate area. So uh, people are not so willing to come here to spend their winters. We have very nice summers though. And we have to stand out somehow. Uh, and what we're good at is digital. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we have been creating a digital society for our own citizens uh, already 15 years ago and we've been using the same system for, uh, for for more than 20 years so we basically replicated the same system that we have for citizens for non-nationals because to spur economic growth and to get more people involved with Estonia to grow our economy and to grow the number of people who are involved because as a small country we have to stand out somehow so that's that's the catch you have to become an e-Estonian all right. Yeah. Well, that's not a bad catch, is it? You know, because I believe talent's a really nice place to go to. Um, uh, how how stable is Estonia for somebody who doesn't know? You know, let's be honest. Um, it's getting very complicated. The ma the world map, isn't it? For somebody who's uh, who doesn't know, how stable is Estonia politically, economically? Well, we're still, um, uh, of course, a democratic country. So we have uh, changes in government uh, from time to time. Uh, based on uh, the parliamentary uh, elections, which actually you can also do with uh, digital identity. So we vote from our computers. Uh, so Estonia is a very stable place in, in terms of all indexes, uh, corruption indexes. Uh, uh, we are a very good economic environment where to actually do business. And uh, and we don't have too much natural disasters or, or any force majeure cases. So uh, you can trust your company here. I trust you found that interesting and perhaps that special opportunity. Now, do watch out for part two of the interview with Ott.